Hello viewer, welcome back to more Let's Play Demon Heart. Today we are starting off on Chapter 4, Inferno. In last episode though, we... we... we kissed Brash. We kissed that motherfucking asshole. Why did we do it, viewer? I don't know! I didn't mean to click it, I swear to god! Or maybe I did. Ah, blah, blah. Yeah, let's just head on to this horrible chapter. Ooh. Jasper and Toons run up to us, emerging from the thick swamp plants. Fisher! What happened? Whichever Fisher are you talking to? <laughs> uh, I just love the way Toons says this. He just whispers to him. Whichever uh, Fisher are you talking to? <laughs> uh, I don't know why I find that so amusing. <laughs> Uh, but he does bring up a good point. Which one are you talking- which half, dude? Which, which half? <laughs> the old man has been disobeying my orders ever since we departed. So here's what happened. Fisher was a monster. The way he attacked me, you wouldn't recognize him. Yeah, this I do kind of agree with. He did look really, really creepy when he attacked us. Fisher? That's impossible! There's still blood on my armor, but I guess Jasper thinks it's Fisher's blood. Don't waste your breath trying to prove these fools are wrong. Come here, we're moving on. I never needed that wretch to begin with. We continue our journey and find ourselves among the swamp ruins once again. It seems Sir Brash figured out where we took the wrong turn before. The soldiers have been really tense ever since they saw Fisher's body. Jesper seems to be cautious of Sir Brash, and Toons is apparently distrustful of us all, not even allowing Jasper to walk close to him. I am a little weary of this whole situation. Everything just doesn't feel right. If Fisher was a traitor, whom can I really trust? Now there's only four of us left. We're back where we started. As we make our way through the barren lands, nightfall creeps up on us. Looks like we're in a new area. The air is damp and misty, and the howling wind sounds like people screaming. Sir, I don't think that's the way. That path looks haunted. The restless souls, they will feast upon our eyes. Yeah? Well, then you go the other way. I'm taking this one. Um, I guess I'm coming with you, sir? I mean, to be fair, you just seem the most confident out of everybody. Of course you're coming with me. Wait, we can't split up like this. Then we'll be out of the mission. You don't say. I suppose you should, you should send a fucking pigeon to... Holy shit, I can see this. <laughs> Good job, me. Starting this el this episode and already I'm screwing up my words. Good job. I suppose you should send a fucking pigeon to ask your lord what to do, since none of you assholes are obeying me. That was meant to be an allied mission. We can't leave it in the hands of Scarcewell Knight alone. You're not counting her. She's part of my equipment, right? My bed warmer. No, what I meant was we will not leave Bright alone with you. We could, you know. He says he doesn't need us, yet he does need Bright. This mission is too dangerous. I'm coming along to protect her. Um, everybody, everybody, calm down, please. All of you are pretty, okay? You all win the beauty contest. Aren't you a pest? You want to be there to make sure I won't bend little Bright over a stump, huh? Jesper moves to punch the knight, but Toons holds him back. I'll remember that. As will I. Sir, I recall you said we are free to turn our tails. Yes. In that case, sir. Toon starts backing off, facing the knight and never relaxing his bow. Toons! I can't believe it! Ah. So it seems like Fisher was kind of right about Toons. Cares more about himself than anybody. Which is understandable. I mean... This area in this mission SUCKS! 
Sir Brush snorts and watches Toon until he disappears. That's one smart idiot. No. How could he? Eh, no, I agree. That was kind of smart. Jasper, come on, you cunt. You want to go with your friend Toons, don't you? N no. I won't be mad. I will not abandon the mission, sir. Fine. Your bones will make a fine exhibition in Rivera's den. As we continue forth, no one says another word. Hey, Jasper, um, thank you for being considerate of me. I mean, you know, Sir Brush is kind of an asshole, so I, I don't mind you hanging around a little bit longer. It's nothing. It just feels wrong that you have been out of. You've been out there. Here. Whatever. How is he even going to use you against the witch? Oh, so I suppose you're not fine with the idea of shooting me when the knight mentioned it earlier? Of course I would not have done anything of the sort. What a terrible man he is. Suddenly, I felt a warmth around my neck. It's been a long time since Raz talked to me. Yeah, let's go with that. You know, I'm beginning to find Orchid respectable. Why so? And why only now? I couldn't fully appreciate her plan, knowing how it failed so miserably, but at least she was an honest witch. She took all the responsibility of creating a demon child and sought to hide and protect him for the rest of humanity. Perhaps, on a certain level, she did understand my kind. We do not value, value the decision of, to create us if it did not come from our mothers. I would only ever feel like the son of my actual mother, not in debt to an evil witch who'd sacrifice a peasant girl to create me, even if my, never, my mother never loved or wanted me. Maybe another demon spawn would think differently. I mean, you all can be the same, right? And be thankful for his existence? Maybe. But consider what the witch is taking away from him. He wouldn't have any of the things Orchid left behind, nor a human friend. All he would have would be the corpse of the woman who didn't love him, and a greedy witch expecting repayment. Sound like you're familiar with this topic. The trauma upon seeing one's dead mother is hardly ever forgotten, as far as I can say. She is the one who stirs our strongest emotions, and to see her like that by her own fault. My first conscious thought was that I wished to die, but there was nothing I could do to end myself. We demon spawn are indestructible. Now imagine if someone else were responsible, if my mother hadn't wished for any of that. The slow deaths I put those witches on would exceed the human lifetime. Ah, but enough of my fantasies. You have your quest to think about. Wait, don't you want to talk about how I almost died? Why? It happens all the time, doesn't it? The beheading was merely your first. Wait, you almost died again? Hell, I turned my back for one minute. Or a few hours. Well, you're quite efficient in getting in trouble, I'll admit. Congratulations. And it seems someone saved you. Are you... jealous? Of a tool? No, he is serving his purpose. The only one he has. It's rather interesting how you seem to be making these humans protective of you. You do possess a specific quality. A quality that will never be named. Because <laughs> nobody knows what the fuck that is. Well, they can certainly keep you safe until I come for you. How nice of them. Come for me? What do you mean? Hmm, I misspoke. Never mind. Okay, I guess. We arrive at the entrance of an underground ruin when it starts raining. Frowning, Sir Brush motion motions us to take cover in the dark out hallway. Jasper steps in and stands by the wall, but I stop to take a look over first. The stairs are adorned with spikes and skulls. A rotting impaled head. Human head stares at me with dried eyes, and I gaze back into it. Can't say if the man was killed by a decapitation or if they did it afterward. 
It reminds me of that day. The angry mob, my thoughts in disarray, the moment which I believed would be my last. The cold blade. And it doesn't help when Sir Brash suddenly grabs my shoulder. Does small shit like this scare you? Same was done to me, asshole. Only without the spike, I think. Yeah, well, I've had an axe in my face, but I wouldn't mind planting one in someone else's. I don't cry when I see it done, either. Yeah, well, you were raised to fight, dude. I wasn't. Leave me alone. My fucking cloak got all wet because of you. Get out of the rain, and out of my god's damn way! Here's where we need to go. Tag along and don't look at deadheads while, like, they're, like, they'll bite. We take cover at the entrance, but Sir Brash seems hesitant to enter the ruin. Jesper is also gazing at the skulls, scattered along the dark stairs as far as the eye can see. Why is the witch doing this? Cause she's... evil? Some... some people in this world are just... Why? It's so cold out here, I feel a chill in my chest. Call for Raz. There's no response. Raz, where are you, dude? Nothing. Uh, of course. Raz is not gonna help us. What a lovely guy. Jesper, I'm not feeling well. I know. I'm feeling kind of nervous as well. This place feels haunted. These lands are haunted. The spirits of the ancient empire roam the wild, seeking revenge for the deaths. Will you cut the crap already, you fucking coward? The only danger here is Rivera, alright. Yes, sir. They both seem distraught. We're close to our target. Follow me, you cunts. Walking the narrow stairway, we descend deep underground. Sir Brush picks up a torch with a dying flame and lights some more torches as we go. The sights don't get any prettier as we move forward. Every dozen steps or so, there's a pair of skeletons shackled to the walls, which invites the question of those who were hung there alive. Who did all this? I did. Now shut up! Shh! I imagine it was Rivera or some ruthless pillages. The Scarswell Knight still acts nervous. His eyes scout the area wildly and aimlessly, and he's fidgeting with his sword. Fuck this shit. Why are you so angry? You haven't seen me angry yet. Shut up, I'm thinking. He just refuses to speak with me. These ruins are the remnants of the ancient Aliran Empire. If it weren't for the skeletons, I'd be enjoying this walk. This place is vast. Someone built all of this, and with such fine stone! And it all stood the test of time! We can't hire someone in feline to build you a basement of this quality nowadays! Stop talking! Jesper stops and rolls his eyes discreetly when the knight isn't looking. Surely he continues whispering to me. I wonder how Rivera managed to chase out the ghosts. You really believe in ghosts, buddy? Yes, they were the inhabitants of the forest empire that existed long before our time. Something horrible must have happened to this entire land to curse them to such a wretched existence. Oh, well that's the case. Could they be working with Rivera? Oh gods, I hope not. I'd wager that if they were ghosts in this particular building, they would have killed her a long time ago. Hmm... Say, Jasper, would you rather face Rivera or a ghost? Well, Rivera for sure. At least she can be killed. <laughs> right. Did you know that in Scotswell, they sometimes punish outlaws by sending them into the cursed swamp above to be torn apart by the spirits? Wrong. We don't do that with outlaws. Only people who piss me off. You're pretty high on the list right now. up with Brash. He's just so 
anxious. We reach a chamber that appears to be a tomb. Right in front of us is a coffin stand. Torches are lit in the mist behind it, though it is unclear if there is a path ahead. Sir Brush sits on the steps with a sword in his lap. From his grim expression, I'd say he is thinking and doesn't want to be disturbed. So, where is Rivera and what do we do next? The knight ignore ignores me, as he usually does. We all have to be ready for battle. It could be any time now. Jesper turns away and ke keeps quiet for a moment, but then turns back to me again, as if he changed his mind. Right? I know this is crazy, but now that you're no longer with Mark... Uh-oh. Um... Yes? I must confess, I've always fancied you. I know we are in a dangerous place, but perhaps that's more of a reason to let you know. Let me guess, it's my tits. My milkshake brings all the boys in the yard, and they're like, it's better than yours. You... like me that way? I noticed Sir Brush giving us a death glare. I wish you could tell me you feel the same. <laughs> I like how there's actually an option to say I do, even though we give little to no interaction with this guy. But... Unfortunately, we're gonna have to turn him down. Jesper, you are a nice lad, and I'm sure you'll make some other woman happy. Do I need to beat the shit out of you both so you would fucking shut up? Can we even manage with the three of us? Could the witch be nearby? Sir, you haven't even told us the plan. I told you the plan before we departed. You were not in it, but you came along anyway because your lord said so. Sir, please. Sir Brush grabs Jasper by the throat and slams him into the wall. He twists Jasper's head to the side with an awful cracking sound. When he lets go, Jasper's body collapses onto the coffin stand. Oh god damn! That is the most awkward position of that hand. But whatever. I watch Sir Brush, speechless. Unless idiot to explain the situation to. Why did you kill him? Makes things easier. How stupid can a fucking fool be? Confessing his love to you in the middle of Rivera's dungeon in front of me? He wasn't a fool. It's maybe like a last ditch effort? No, not last ditch, but it like, uh. Last time before he dies, maybe? I don't know. Just want to make sure he had no regrets. That's what, that's what it is. Right, and I'm the fucking Lord of Scarswall. Now we can have a little talk about this whole witch thing. Now? Yeah, there won't be another time. First off, your Lord doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He's trying to double-cross everyone with soldiers like those tough chance. Do you know Lord Second and his dogs lied to your parents that you're dead? What? Your lord needed someone to execute to calm the, down the people. Then, when your pretty head grew back on, he decided to make you a military secret. There was a bloodthirsty mob cheering for your demise, wasn't there? How do you think they would react when they learned they were tricked? Um, you know what? I don't care what they think. I am innocent of all crimes, and they have to leave me alone. I'm sure they'll leave you alone, in a prison cell, or in the lands of a lunatic who will tear you to pieces. So, Lord Second and friends meant to keep you hidden and use you if need rose, or hand you over to the king if he ever remembered us. They don't want your kitty legs walking free, ever. You're effectively dead. They weren't much good at keeping your existence secret anyway. Alright, so what's the point of you telling me this? I don't know. I don't understand why I ever spoke to you, instead of just bringing you here in the sack like I was supposed to. Rivera gave Lord Second a fair deal. Hand you over, and no one else gets hurt. 
but the old food tried to drop across her, so we all had to get along for a while. Or pretend to. Superash grabs both of my hands as he looks deep into my eyes. Uh, Brash? What are you doing? I'm so sorry, kitten, sweetie. It's a shitty task they're forcing me to do. As he looms over me, his face turns into a sneer. He kicks Jasper's body out of the way and pins me down to the coffin stand. So, if you try to escape, you can, but you'll actually miss some uh, interesting dialogue. So, we're gonna be, again, more tactful and ask, What are you doing? You'll be mine if it's the last thing you do. What are you saying? Are you going to kill me? Shut up! I'll do something else to you! He looks mad and desperate, holding me down against the cold stone and piercing me with his cruel, mismatched eyes. Finally, I lie still, surrendering. Brash holds my arms with his and presses his body against mine, as if to ensure I won't be wriggling free. As he starts to realize I am not fighting back, his grip relaxes. He helps me up so I am sitting on the stone block while he is kneeling in front of me. He is still blocking my way with his blood with his body, but it doesn't seem like he's intended to do anything else. He takes off one of his gloves and starts caressing my hair, all the while watching my face in disbelief. What are you doing? Hush. You were such a perfect kitten for me. I was? So young and innocent. I could show you which way is up. I would have taken you to Scarswall with me. No one would be able to hurt you again. Then why didn't you? Because that would get me killed. And then you'd be fucked. If only you weren't a demon heart. Why does it have to end this way? Which way? You are too weak for the value of that thing in your chest. Everyone wants you dead. You can't defend yourself. It's only a matter of who kills you first. You too? No, but my hands are tied. It's your life or mine. Damn. After all the crap I've done, I can't bear to be responsible for this. It's too late, though. We're already here. If Rivera lifts a finger, I'm dead. I can't do anything to her. My mission was to deliver you into her hands. So this is the extra dialogue we'd be kind of missing out on. But even if we ran away, we would get caught. So, again, missing out. So, Sir Brash, you double-crossing bastard! What the hell? You're working for Rivera? The wench is blackmailing me, blackmailing me with my life. She did something to me. And now she owns me. Owned you? What does that mean? It means she can kill me whenever she wants if I don't perform her task to her liking. She wouldn't even need to be here. I would just fall dead. Who else knew of this? Rivera demanded that Lord Second hand you over. He meant to send you as a decoy and honestly thought his soldiers could defeat her. He knew handing you over wouldn't be a permanent solution to his problems. Your lord is a nosy, nosy weasel, though, so he may have suspected I would not work according to the plan. He thought his puny soldiers would stop me. <laughs> well, if you're working for Rivera, what about Lord Mace? Mace is not the least pleased I have two masters, but it's either that or I'm dead, and he doesn't need a dead knight. Don't give up so easily! Help me fight her brush! It's no use. She can kill me from afar, at any time she likes. Br Brash takes me by the wrist and pulls me through a hallway, clutching my arm firmly. Struggling to keep pace with him, I realize I have no ch chance of escaping as long as he's got such a strong hold all around my arm. Suddenly, I cannot move. Brash's hand is no longer around my arm, but I am captured by a field of magical energy. There's someone in the hallway ahead. 
Oh no. Pathetic well. You cannot even make use of your gift of speed. Honestly, I chose not to use it, but whatever. How perfect that I shall harness that power when I consume your heart. You... Are you Rivera? No less. I am Rivera, the mistress of the wilds. Zanari, hold the barrier while I speak. Another witch steps out from the shadows. A hooded figure I remember well. Hey. Ari. She stands there wordlessly, concentrating on the magic around me. If you are scared of the monkey who dragged you here... I promise, after I am done with you, he will seem like a feeble jester in comparison. Mistress, we might want to consider treating her better. It's a pity they couldn't pair her up with someone more decent for her last journey. What? Why are you defending this whelp? I should have words with you yet. I meant only... Be silent and hold that barrier! This is about my heart, isn't it? Yes, your heart and your body under its influence. I wish to study you. I suspect you shall prove to be of a more agreeable character than my barbaric pawn. To think that the shivering mess of the Lord of Feline really intended to murder me. He wrote me back that he couldn't hand the demon heart prisoner to anyone but the crown. And then, of course, he kept you. Perhaps he too was drawn to the lure of the unholy hearts and tried to save you for himself. When in the end he agreed to hand you over, I suspected he was lying. And soon enough, my minions spied a group of soldiers around you. A group of which there are none left. I wonder how that happened. Well, two were killed by Brash, one ran away, and then there's Brash himself. I had assumed they were all dead. How disappointing. No matter. Your old fool of a lord was unaware that one of his allies has been working for me. Sir Brash. The animal only became a sir after I gave him immortality, of course. But I suppose I should not expect gratitude. Brash remains quiet. Oh, she's not talking. Brash remains quiet after all her insults. It's so unlike him. You shall be much more pleasing subject than he ever was. I will torture you and learn all your secrets. Just like Sikin Rin did with that miserable demon spawn. Hey, these two are back again. Could you shorten the evil speech? She's here. Get it over with. Silence, fool. For someone who has had a half of his brain sliced off underneath that ugly scar, you certainly talk too much. What? You don't yet understand. Of course you don't. This is why I chose to avoid humans and their incompetence. Pay him no heed. He is merely a test subject that has served its purpose of delivering you into my hands. First, I will learn all about your nature. And then I will use your sweet black heart to make myself immortal. Just like you are now. Or would you rather be made a gift to my apprentice? The young witch looks at the ground. It is only fair, isn't it? After all, you ate someone else's heart. What? Or was it demon flesh you devoured? It is even more difficult to acquire. Yeah, I think it's demon flesh. I think Raz said that. I suppose since Orchid was a good harlot to the demons, she could have obtained some during one of her many passionate encounters with the beasts. I don't know, but she did make me eat something. She was a foolish woman until the very end. She sought immortality and had it right in her grasp, yet she chose a demon child instead. The child is not her. She is not immortal. She is dead. Was there even a demon child in the end? Did you kill her? Or did he? 
Or did she summon the demon for mating, only to be slaughtered by it? Why would I tell you any of this shit? So that you could die in this pain. No matter. If there is a Jimin child, it will end up a chain sooner or later, like the rest of them. No one favors the blasted beasts. So much for living on through her immortal son, and being remembered through his undying love. Still, she was efficient in acquiring demon flesh. I'll give her that. Although it took being a harlot. It took me years to find my first demon hearted hunter down. You know, um... I would be of more use to you alive than dead. I could help you find your immortality elsewhere. You'll be alive for as long as it suits me. Ultimately, I will kill you. I do not need anything I don't already have. Besides for my lover. She shoots a look at Ari. The only other thing I care for of him is my research on immortality, which requires your body, not your service. This is it, then. She has been informed of her fate. Now she is mine. And you've also informed me that you're our Ari's lover. Eh, whatever. Zanari, do it. Male, you will carry her. Ari moves her hands towards me, followed with a wave of darkness. This burning pain. I'm seeing fire. But is it real? What is the strong feeling in my arms and back? In that goddamn butt! Woo! Oh, this is fun. What is this place? This is a hospital. Hey, long time no see, Orchid. Looks more like a morgue to me. Oh no, this is a place for everyone. The dead and the living. They all hold equal value. I've been getting behind on my work. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to you? These people expect too much of me. I have to endure them. There is knowledge to be found in working with people. However, there are far too many of them, and the experiences become repetitive. Too many? How can you say that? Do you wish there were fewer? Oh, how young you are. For years, I worked on my hearing skills, thinking I would one day unlock the secret to immortality. Who, if not me? I was exceptional from the start. I even surpassed my teacher. Hmm, impressive. But in my work, I only found disappointment. Finally, I had to admit true immortality for someone born human is impossible. Only demons and demon spawn truly live forever. What about demon hearts? It does not prolong your natural lifespan. You will still age, and when your mind shuts down, you will become a living dead. In that situation, dying would be the most dignified thing to do. So, you didn't really care about the people you healed. I cared to succeed. What difference does it make? I healed them. But you healed them for different reasons. Not because you're... it was the best for everybody, and to make yourself feel better, it was for your horrible intentions. Do not think that I am enjoying myself. It is repulsive. But it's all for the sake of research. Why did you sound like Rivera right there? So much pain. Have you been having nightmares? You... It must have been from so much bleeding. As soon as you become a demon heart, someone will hunt you down as well. 
Be quiet, pest. You shall need to learn some manners and quickly. Your service has only begun. Why am I naked? I... I do have a sexy body, but come on, makes me feel uncomfortable. Toys do not need clothes. Also, it makes your body more easily accessible for my experiments. And what sort of experiments are you doing? Something along the lines of what Dear Orchid used to do. Learning about the human body, wasn't it? But my methods are a bit more efficient. I fear neither knives nor magic. I have years of experience into the demon hearts. Now I am onto more advanced issues regarding the nature of you. I have to learn everything there is to know to make certain I will be safe when I have finally afflict myself. Well, how can I serve you? How can I help? Maybe, hopefully, you get me out of here? You can keep hanging there. The rest is in my hands. But if you really wish to be helpful, don't talk too much. Don't be painfully ignorant. Understand your fate is to serve someone greater than yourself. Maybe, but that someone isn't you. I will prepare a special torture device for you, you pest. Aw, but Rivera, I admire you so much! Why must we be enemies? We could be allies and kick some ass! You lie, weakling. All you know is words. You despise me, yet don't you? I've slaughtered your townspeople. Eh, the townspeople go fuck themselves, honestly. <laughs> I mean, they kind of fucked me over, so why not fuck them in return? Even though you're merely a test subject, it bothers me when you speak nonsense. I've left your brain intact, so please use it. You are not my enemy. You are merely a toy. Alright, fair enough, but uh, hey. About Ari. Ari's working for you, right? Sonari, she belongs to me. Oh, nice. Where can I get one? You cannot get anything, pest. Your days have passed. Well, you know what? I hope I'm never in your service, because I take that back of helping you in any shape or form. You can go fuck yourself. Your hopes are in vain. Your life is over. Zinari, clean up this unsightly mess. Hey, Zinari, long time no see. The young witch approaches me, holding a damp cloth. There's blood on my chest, but Ari starts cleaning it off. I don't have any wounds anymore. They all healed quickly. I noticed some dark scars on my chest, though. There should be a lot at this point because I've been stabbed by Fisher, and now I just recently got stabbed some more, so... Oh, a lot of wounds on my chest. More scars like the one around my neck. Sorry. I... This must be uncomfortable. Eh, to be honest, it's better than stabbing. Yes, I suppose so. I could never stab you. Just a little more. After she carefully wipes the last traces of blood from my skin with the cloth, she runs her fingers through my hair to comb it. You... don't have to do that, you know. I wish none of this had happened. I liked you when we first met, and I wanted you to stay safe. You should have just given up. Instead of becoming Orchid's assistant, she got you into this. If you knew about her plans, you should have told me plainly. I couldn't. I wasn't allowed to warn anyone. I don't know what's happening anymore. I thought I wanted immortality, but it, not if it means killing someone like you. I can never attack the demon for its flesh either. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, someone like me? W what do you mean? You are so young and beautiful, and such a nice person too. Isn't it an injustice that I should die so that old lady could become immortal? I mean, come on. Come on. I mean, I heard it said that once they 
They, your lifespan still continues on, so that old crone is going to die eventually. A lot sooner than me. So come on. Yes, that's what I've been thinking all along. I... I have to go. Wait! Aww. She runs off, all distressed. Damn it, I'm alone again. I can still feel the amulet around my neck, but I haven't heard from R Raz ever since my abduction. I wonder why. There's little to do here, but think back on everything. And sleep. Ah, here you are again, little boy. Raz, you're a child again. Hearts we tore! Oh, that took a weird delay. So he's trying to tell us something. Hearts we tore! The message reads out to, there are two! Hearts we tore, or there are two. Was I even supposed to, to decipher that? Trapped again, just like me. We have to fight. We can be free! Oh, this looks familiar. What would you do if you were all alone and you came face to face? With a demon spawn. It might have been different had you not been hanging from a cross. Cross? That's right. Wake up. I've arrived. Finally, we meet in flesh. Yours is exposed indeed. Raise? You have seen me in your dreams. What joy is it to finally meet you? It is I, the voice from your amulet. You're real! Did you think you invented me? Well, you did seem too good to be true. Yes, keep praising me. It's the most intel intel intelligent tactic given your current position. I've observed you, much of you as you were traveling, but I've never seen you quite like this. Stop staring. I would make a joke about the way you are displayed here, but I somehow doubt you're in the mood. I'll thank you not to comment on it. He approaches me on his crooked goat legs and cut my chin with his claws. Why, you must be the most tame and helpless little human out there. Oh, I forgot. You depend upon my mercy. What shall we do about that? Um... What do you want? I mean, I thought you were going to help me because we were allies! Hey? Allies? We we're buddies? What are you offering? I, uh, I will find a way to repay you. There must be a way you could find me useful. Of course I could find a use for you. The question is, how would I trust your loyalty? Well, enough of my questioning. We both know I came to rescue you. Why else would I be here? Well, thank the... Well, thank you. Get me out of here, please. I am tr a true ally, am I not? Actually, why didn't you save me before Rivera did this to me? Ah, uh, perhaps I overestimated you. Before jumping to your aid, I was hoping to observe you displaying competence. But since you didn't, I am left with no choice. You are intelligent, if weak. Intelligent enough to understand respecting me could save you from a premature and permanent death. I would miss your beautiful, soothing voice if something were to happen to you. Well, I'm I'm so glad he came for me, cause this would really suck. Such manners, from a puppet strung on a tortured cross. I suppose I do inspire such affection. Just look at Orchid, who sacrificed herself all because of me. 
He examines the torture device. Yes, this should be easy. Prepare yourself. With the sound of ropes tearing, I fall into Reza's arms. How long has it been since I used my legs? Careful. My adornments may be... pointy. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> lean onto him until you're gaining my balance. That seems most logical. How exquisite your skin. Now I know there is something better than merely watching you. <laughs> okay, can I just make so say something about this? Yes, finally! We are together! And you are amazing! Oh my god, that is... That... Oh my god, this fucking dialogue right here. Ah! <laughs> It's terrible, but it's terribly amusing. <laughs> or terribly amazing. <laughs> Should everyone choose a viewer? Well, we shall go with. Why do you have shackles on your arms? This. It is a fashion detail. A little reminder of what happens to my kin when we get in trouble. We're not very popular. Did someone else put those on you? And are those scars? Concerned as you may be, I would ask you to stop inquiring about that. Right now, I am free as a, uh, well, an unincarcerated demon spawn, which cannot be said about you. But fear not. I have decided to grace you with my presence until you are safe from the witch. There is no point in watching you become more and more battered every day. It was such a disappointing show. Sounds like you were aware of me being tortured, asshole. You could have helped me sooner. I thought I was being more helpful by allowing you independence. We are about to put everything right, believe me. I've examined this dungeon, its locking me mechanisms included. We can move freely, which is about two levels above. I have such sights to show you. Come, my dear. Get out of here, Katie. Well, might as well give them our hand. When we leave the cell and enter the dark corridor, Ray's lets go of my hand and motions me to follow him. Would you like some clothes? Yes, please! I am tired of being topless. Then we shall try to recover the ones you had. You could surely use having your armor back as well. You seem like a fine suit of armor, though protection is not quite in my domain. Where would we, where would we find my things? Come. We continue exploring the hallway. As Raz walks in front of me, I try to examine his scarred back, his red skin and his fiery animal eggs and his furry animal legs in the magic light blue. He seems to favor chains in his attire. His entire outfit is made up of some chains and two pieces of cloth draped over his thighs, though the fur covers enough. God damn it, Kitty, get out of here. Now is not time to play. Sorry, my cat keeps trying to jump in front of my screen. She wants attention right now, but it's like, no, no, it's not the time for that. Anyway, this chest is not as dusty as the others. There are signs of opening. Oh, here's an armor and a knife. You've acquired an armor piece! Yeah! Yes, this is the one you wore while I spied on you. Yes, those are my things. Let's see what else we can find. Some kind of a... <laughs> Golden plug. <laughs> ah, great choice of words there. Great choice of words. Jesus Christ. No. Oh, it's a hairbrush. It's not yours. What? Then who is is it? Oh no. Actually no. Let's go with. Are you insulting my hair, asshole? Oh no, though I could use some taken care of as of late. Eh, fair enough. Do you need the brush? It's rather heavy. 
It's not worth it to drag this garbage along. Yes, I'll take it. It's nice, dude. Look at that design. It's a really nice brush. How irrational. Your face is irrational. Shut up, dude. Now, what else is in this chest? A pentagram earring. Have you begun worshipping worshiping me already? Oh well, no, that's not mine. I found it. Good. I don't want to catch you worshipping other infernal denizens. There's one more thing in here. A peculiar book. Your precious little diary. You will have to show me what you wrote in it once we have more time. Sure. Except the parts about you, of course. But those are the best parts. <laughs> Fine. Oh, Raze, you're quite an amusing guy. Just because he's so full of himself, but he's like aware he's full of himself, and it's quite amusing. You also had a bow, didn't you? I don't see where the witch would store an item of that size. We'll be on the lookout for it, just in case. Yes, we have some serious business to discuss. You are a demon heart, and so is another prisoner in this dungeon. Do you know what demon hearts do to each other? Uh, one eats the other's heart? Indeed. You shall drain that pathetic creature of his demonic life, and he will never rise again. Your power, in the meantime, will grow more demonic. Meaning you become stronger, quicker in reaction, and faster recover from injury and death. Oh my, uh, did my personality change? No, no, it is perfectly safe, as far as your personality goes. Um, will I start looking like a demon? Absolutely not. The only thing that can affect your appearance now is scarring. I see. My kind might be the supreme and truly immortal one, but yours, I think, are more entertaining. Oh? How so? You should know that all of your power, that which you've stolen from others included, passes on to the one who makes off with your heart. There are quite a few of you out there. I imagine all the possible outcomes of your heart-eating wars. There should be enough to keep your little mind busy for months. Sorry to disappoint, but I don't want to hurt anyone, much less eat their hearts. Sounds disgusting. Do you wish to go home? You don't have a home anymore. Well, if that's the case, I'll find a new home. I can move anywhere I want to. One where you will not be disturbed by evil hunters. We shall see. Let us face the other demon heart. I promise you, you will find him disarmed. Did Rivera have another demon heart in captivity all along? Motioning me to be quiet, Rays leads me through the dungeon, up to a heavy sealed door. Can you feel something amiss? There is a sharp, unnatural smell in the air. I happen to have picked up some keys earlier. Now, be strong. Don't faint when I open the door. As the door rumbles open, we are hit by a wave of purple fumes. I have to cough and hold my throat. What foul poison is this? There, there. Now that the room is open, the concentration of the poison will not be enough to kill you. And the other demon heart is in there? Yes, and has been for a while. Hence, you have nothing to fear from that one. Step in. In a daze, I stumble forward. But, we're gonna have to save the cell for next time! Because I am a dick like that. Save. 92, 94, whatever. So what is in the cell? What is going on? This is the other demon heart, but who's the other demon heart? What is... What, what the hell? What, what is going on? But we'll say that for next time. I am Terror the Fox. You are the viewer. And I hope to see you next time.